Canada, Germany, and then we were here in Hawaii. And then sometime in the late 90s, a race director from Canada with an immense passion for the sport of triathlon and a great vision who had recently taken over the event in Ironman Canada that was growing in popularity. And the then president of the CEO, Lou Friedland, who also had great vision and saw the popularity and the passion that athletes had about the sport, they got together and they said, let's bring this to the United States. And in August of 1999, in Lake Placid, we had the first event. In November, Panama City Beach. Then they made their way across the country and they managed to persuade the United States Marine Corps to open up that beautiful base there in Southern California to hold an event. Madison, Wisconsin, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, into Disney World in Florida, to Tempe, Arizona. The sport got opened up to all of you, this amazing sport, this amazing lifestyle suddenly became accessible for so many. And probably the most important was the vision that our inductee had. He was the forefront of what we have come to know as the experience of Iron Man. This whole, what you come here to an event, it was his passion. He always said, Paula, First and foremost, it's about the athletes. Swim, bike, and run. You have to find the greatest venues for athletes to swim, bike, and run. Great courses. And secondly, great communities. Not just finding a location that you can bring an event every year. It was all about bonding with a community. Understanding that they had to be invested in this. He created the initial foundation. He understood that the community needed to be invested to be a part of this. What, what determined success for him was in Lake Placid the first year was a handful of athletes did the first race. What he wanted to see every year was that the next year there were three times as many and then there were 50 athletes and then 100 athletes from Lake Placid. In Tempe, Arizona, one member of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community had the courage to try the Ironman, and now there is an entire triathlon club in their community. It was, it's, been, it's been amazing. And for me personally, as I exited my career as a professional athlete, he gave me the opportunity to make the transition from being an athlete to understanding what it took to create what we now on the other side here call the magic show. That as an athlete, you just appeared in a community and there it was. Courses were closed, volunteers were there, aid stations were set up. It all was just magic out there. And then the next day, magically, it's all gone. He made me understand how much went into creating this lifestyle and this passion. And his primary passion was bringing health and fitness and the Ironman lifestyle to so many communities in North America. And it's been so wonderful for me to be able to personally continue to be a part of this family as the Ironman legacy grows around the world. So it's with so much pride and so much honor, really. And for all the people that he has influenced and so many in the last few years that have made their way here because of what he has built and the standards that he set, and the giving back that he has done to so many communities. It's, uh, it, it's hard for me, but um, your 2012 uh, Hall of Fame, I'm Man Hall of Fame inductee, the one and only Graham Fraser. Okay, that's tough to follow. Thank you, Paula, a dear friend.
Anyway, my wife, um, I've made over 150 Ironman speeches at events, and she wanted to make sure I did a good one and said I have to take notes. So, honey, I have it, but I won't read it. But anyway, I, I read the behind me, it says anything is possible. And I landed on this island in 1984 as a 23-year-old kid, the same age as my daughter. And I was a hockey player. I didn't know how to swim. I had a $200 bike, a scuba mask, and running shoes that weighed about a pound each. And I came here and I did this event. By doing that event, it changed my life. Um, as you all know, when you do an Ironman, something inside you goes off, it's different. I left here as a 23-year-old kid that believed I could do anything. And that's what carried me through a career. Um, it was it was a very special thing. This island means a lot to me. Diana Birch, your team, um, thank you. Uh, I, before I forget, Andrew Messick. Andrew, thank you for, uh, he called me and said he was going to do this for me, and I, I, I appreciate it. it. It means a lot to me. But um, anyway, I, I'm not going to bore you with every detail I could, uh, I had a guy who came up at Ironman Florida, my car, I remember, and he started his speech and he was going through a year, but you know, a couple of years and he had the audience gripped. He was one of the older gents. And about uh, five minutes in, we realized he's gonna talk about every year of his career. And Mike had to get the hook out. So I, I won't do that to you, but anyway, yeah. That was a wonderful moment. Um, anyway, I um I lived a dream, as you were trying to do on Saturday, you're gonna you gotta go to your dream. I I uh I put a race on my hometown when I left this island in Grimsby, Ontario, 300 people. I had no idea what I was doing, and a couple other towns called. Long story short, we ended up doing a race series in Ontario, which led me to putting on over 200 races before I even got involved with Iron Man. And in 1995, um, and I'm really thrilled he's here, I didn't know he was going to be here, David Yates is out there in the audience. Uh, David and I were in a little political battle with the David, give your hand for David. He's, a, he's, a, he's a, one of the old presidents of Iron Man. I'm really thrilled he's here. There he is. There's David Yates. Dolphin tail, another story. But anyway, uh, David and I were uh, politically involved with the ITU, and I, I was I was young enough and stupid enough to volunteer to be the commissioner of the ITPT. Ken Glaw would know that, and Mark Allen, a group that was uh, putting races on around the world. It was a political battle, but I spent a lot of time with David, and that's how I got introduced to Iron Man. And then uh, Michael Bregman, who was uh, the owner of Army Canada, asked me to move Army Canada to Ontario. And I uh, thought, great, he's going to give me 50% ownership. And I thought, great, I just get 50% ownership for the race and I moved to Ontario. And people from Penticton flew out and met me and convinced me to come out and see their community, which I did. Um, right away, I got it. I saw what was special there. And I decided to uh, take a stab at this thing. I went to Michael Bregman and I said, well, why don't I just buy this thing from you? What, what would it take? And uh, Michael said, just give me the investment I put back in. Michael had saved the race when it was bankrupt and put a quarter million dollars in. So he said, give me my money back. And so I went over to my wife and said, hey, guess what? There's a race that loses $100,000 a year that costs a quarter million dollars. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, just when I cried. She said, yes, let's go. Anyway, that's the only cry The point is she believed in me. She trusted me and said, go do it. And David was supportive. And uh, we went, and within two years, that race was filling up. And uh, the Ironman boom, I could see was coming. And um, David was no longer with Ironman, and Lou Friedland came in. Uh, Lou is not here tonight, but has been on the phone with me a lot this week. He's one of my dear friends. We have a place together in Florida. We spend a lot of time together. He was a president of Ironman at the time. And Lou called me and said, you know, go do one. Go find one in the U.S. And the first place we went to was Lake Placid, New York. And Ironman's this big thing, you know, all these operations. We had four people in an office. And we built Lake Placid and we built Panama City. And it was, it was an incredible journey. It was a, a new frontier. We really didn't know what we were doing, but we just... It was passion, it was pride, it was a special time. It was um, laying a foundation. And the most important thing for me to be up here is with my team. They're sitting, oh. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was gonna happen. Anyway, my team is sitting down here. Shane Factel, Shelly Abraham, what? Boy, did you work hard. 
special people. Shane Facto is the director of operations, still here. He's the guy nobody knows that keeps us all together. A very special guy in my life. I was doing everything at the time, um, and he came along and gave me relief and allowed me to go make it bigger. He was a special guy. Shane, stand up. Just stand up. He doesn't like attention, and I know that, and you deserve it. And Shelly, the same thing. Shelly still works for me, the poor soul. She's still at my side, putting on bike events and having fun. But anyway, we had a wonderful team. And the thing about our team is it was all pride. It was passion. Um, it was just a group that came along and really cared. And boy, did we have fun. Every event, there was a party and a social, karaoke, beach football games. It really was a special time in my life, and I'll, I'll cherish that. For everybody ever worked for me that's out there, um, the suppliers, we had Mark Roy, Greg McFadden, Dave and Mel. Um, what a special time we had. And um, I see Paul Huddle and Rock and Heather, a group that's really, really worked hard. And you laid the, it wasn't me, it was us. We laid this foundation for something very special. The sport owes you. Be proud of what you did. Anyway, the most important thing I take from this is, uh, you know, I, I, I was in the sport for 28 years, and that's why it's emotional. Uh, the gratitude I have for everything it did for me, it opened so many doors and dreams that I never, ever envisioned. I got to go to so many different things in my event, meet so many incredible people, people who are leaders in industry, people who are leaders in what they do. And, um, and open the doors for my children and my family that um, you know I never would have dreamed of. And, that, and that's the gratitude I have. I also, the people in the front here, a lot of people, um, the industry people, I thank you. There's so many people I worked with. I really had a great time working with all the different people who were out here from the Mike Lee, who I saw today from ART and Allen. And um, there's just so many. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. It was an era of specialness. And, um, and the other group I wanted to mention before I, I, I leave this, I've I got a couple other things to say, but race directors in general. Uh, I'm one of the few race directors who are up here getting inducted. Uh, there's a lot of race directors in our era. They all put their name on it. They, I see Barry Siff out there, and there's uh, Terry Davis. And, and there's lists and lists of people, Dave McGillery, just the guys I got to work with and know over the time, the, the guys from Australia, Europe. It was a special era where it was always someone's name on an event. And when your name was an event, you put your heart into it. You made it special. You had your pride. Um, you knew that everyone who left your event, you know, it had to be special. And that was the group that built the foundation for sport that's going to go on forever. Um, it's a very special time. So I applied all those race directors and Diana Birch. I've seen this event grow since you've taken over. It's a lot of work to put on a race. Um, I always joke, Shelly and I were joking today, because so many athletes get caught up on what they get in their race kit and all those. You know, I, I always said if I ever wrote a book, it's going to be called It's Not About the Sling Bag. It's about, it's about your experience. It's about 4,000 people. It's about a community. It's about a spirit. It's about people training all year. It's something special that you have in your life. And to each and every athlete out there, you're the lucky ones. You're the ones who get to be out here. You're healthy. You get to change communities. You get to go back to your communities and be leaders and in influencing an obese nation, which is my passion that I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing. And you all get to do that. So for everyone out there, realize you're the lucky one. We're all the lucky people on this planet. There's, I, mean, I read The Economist. You talk about Syria and Somalia countries. There's problems. We are the chosen ones. So please remember that on Saturday. Fulfill your dream. Um, that's what you're here for. It's a very, very special thing. And... Um, it's a wonderful sport. I've had a great time doing it. And finally, I want to just thank my family. My kids are out there. As Mike said when Andy announced him, we've all seen our kids grow up together through this sport. My daughter has done two Ironmans. My boys think we're nuts, but they've been to many Ironmans. They work for me now in our bike races we put on. I, I'm glad you're here. And the reason that I wanted my children here is just to see that if you work hard, if you believe in yourself, if you put people ahead of yourself, dreams happen. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Congratulations from each and every one of us. Well, well deserved. So, you know how I like going. If you've ever been to Ironmans before, I go through stats of what goes on numbers-wise at the race. So, 
Let's start with the age groups. So the largest age group in the men in, in the race is the men's 40 to 44, which it was last year. There's 260 of you in that age group. But last year, the second largest age group was the men 35 to 39, but it's moved up to the men 45 to 49. So in that age group, if you're trying to, you know, win your age division or go podium, good luck. Jeez. <laughs> So on the women's side, it's the women's 40 to 44, 85 of you in that group, and 35 to 39 is the second largest group, 84. So just one separate that, those two age groups. But here's the interesting stat. Over 50 years old in the race, 525 athletes, there were 425 last year. How about 60 and plus? 191 in the race, 60 years and over. 70 plus, 48 athletes out there over 70 years old. <laughs> 75, we've got 19 of them over 75 years old. And for the first time in the history of the event, we've got six athletes over 80 years old.